to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. There is somewhere God is taking you, and no power in hell will stop it. I want you to believe what I'm saying. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet. Take your eyes away from the temporary setbacks, no money, no ministry, no influence, all that is rubbish. The Bible says they looked unto him. That's the key. He lifted the brazen serpent and he says to look. Take away your eyes for all those who looked at the serpent, the one on the ground, could not have an effect on them. He said, if it be thou, bid me come. And Peter set his gaze. But the winds were still boisterous and he turned his eyes. You know that song? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Who knows that song? His wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely deep in the light of his glory and I'd like you to prophesy to yourself in one minute no force is capable of hindering the purposes of God over my life shake away unbelief shake away limitations I may not look like it but the spirit of God is doing something you may not feel like a man of God, but the anointing is within your horizon. There's no plan of darkness that is able to thwart the purposes of God over your life. Can you prophesy to yourself? Going to the place of destiny by the anointing by the power of the Holy Ghost there is no power no force the gates of hell does not sustain the ability to stop me I decree and declare that I am rising by the Spirit hallelujah This, this is already a message to someone because you see brothers and sisters this life has a way of taking away your gaze from Jesus some of you had to trek to come here and while you were trekking the devil told you where is the grace you claim you have for prosperity some of you had to fight all kinds of battles to be here but let me tell you if your life were ordinary the devil will not waste his time around you there was something the spirit of the antichrist saw with the star and began to manipulate herod to look for where jesus is satan has refused to let you go because there is something in your life and around your destiny that makes him uneasy and in the name of jesus i declare to you again that no power it's already too late no power no power of hell will stop you. You see, for as long as it is night, you will continue to weep. But when light comes, this light we are talking about, the Bible says there were many lights. Buddhism has some light. occultism has some light they manipulate things but the bible says he made two great lights great lights the lights that rule in the day and the lights that rule in the night 
when the sun shines you wonder if there are stars again all of a sudden the brilliance that is the same way God does not bless you by just prophesying to you alone he blesses you by getting you filled with his light you become so full you turn back and can't find darkness again the Bible says in John chapter 1 listen carefully and verse 5 it says the light shineth in darkness the light the word that you have that has been brought to you by the spirit is capable of dispelling any darkness so brothers and sisters let me encourage you you may look around your life and not find any traceable evidence that rewards your hunger and your passion for God and the devil will want to lie to you to say for how long will you continue seeking him without a sign let me tell you this do you know in the spirit five minutes to your breakthrough it will still not be like it but all of a sudden he said in a moment in a twinkling of an eye your life will just shift and change in a way that will bless you that's how God lifts people please I want you to be very intentional about your expectation God is not a fool he doesn't call the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain creator of the universe what can you do what can you do your life before you sit down Psalm 45 Psalm 45 the Lord just put it in my spirit to prophesy over your life words are powerful realities are created through words 45 verse 12 it says and the daughter of tyre shall be there with a gift it says even the rich among the people shall entreat your favor there is listen i taught you something well we're going to teach on something but it's just a grace that came on me now listen to me listen you see brothers and sisters everything in life that we know is bought with money is that true do you agree with me but do you know that money itself is a product that is bought with something come promise promise once a phone listen carefully and then i give him money this money can buy a phone do you agree what if it is money he wants what can I give him to buy money? The name of what you give that buys money is what the Bible calls true riches. True riches. It is true riches that can purchase unfaithful mammon and alongside with it buy every other thing. The peace, the joy, the influence. Are we together? There is something in this kingdom that buys every other thing. On earth, this looks like the highest, most valuable thing. When you possess this, you can make any noise and ramble and talk rubbish. But in the kingdom, there are realities that we possess. Listen carefully. And the Bible says, with it, anything, whether this, 
whatever it is you can possess is is called the true riches there are seven of this spiritual capital one of them is called light we buy things with light the power light is capital in the spirit the anointing is capital in the spirit words are capital in the spirit in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands and I speak over you that in this season I program a climate of spiritual reality above you and I declare may it begin to call strange levels of lifting in your life may it begin to call strange levels of honor to your life may it begin to call strange levels of speed in your life we're going to sit down shortly let me pray for the grace for speed now listen be sensitive because the people the anointing will come on sometimes they can attempt to run physically so you hold them so they don't scatter anywhere right now i stretch my hands the grace that came upon elijah that caused him to overtake the chariot of Ahaz. By this apostolic and prophetic grace, I stand in the office of my call. I shift you by speed. Enter a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, speed, speed, speed. I prophesy it. In one day, let Zion be born. I command speed, speed in your finances speed in your spiritual life speed in every area of your life whatever level you have been in spiritually and you have refused to shift I stand by prophecy and I shift you to a new dimension new level of prophecy new level of revelation new level of encounters new levels of signs and wonders receive it in the name of Jesus we see glory you know that's all In this kingdom it is what is on you that controls what is around you are you hearing what I'm saying in this kingdom it is the spiritual climate above you I'm speaking by the spirit it is the spiritual climate above you that controls the realities that are captured in your life it takes more than desire it takes more than zeal again I'm speaking to you any climate over you that is drawing things in your life that are putting you in trouble any climate that is refusing you from rising you are a man of God with an anointing yet doors are not opening because there is a climate in the name of Jesus I command that climate to live your life now shortly lift your hands I want to pray on your hands not you just your hands it was with the hand Moses held the rod he says and with these hands you will do signs and wonders I stretch my hands to your hands and by the spirit I make contact with your hands may these hands carry strange fire fire for signs fire for wonders you lay these hands 
and change the destinies of men you lay these hands and speak the purposes of the kingdom everything these hands come upon i declare that it is anointed it will be an instrument of signs and wonders in the name of jesus christ please sit down if you can just just leave those under the anointing please sit down Hallelujah. You see, if the power of God cannot come and change you, then you are wasting your time. Brothers and sisters, I am ministering to you what the Bible calls true riches. This is God's justice system. Oh, I didn't, I was not so educated. Oh, I was not this. I didn't have wealthy parents. But there is something that can come upon men and help them. You are receiving the help of God. God doesn't just help people by wishing. He puts something upon your life. I've taught you this. What is on you is what controls what is around you. Not what you want. Not what men say. They can talk nonsense from morning till night. If you ever turn and see strange results in your life whether you know it or not there is something controlling it if a man ever looks at you and says i want to bless you nobody has the heart to do it on his own no sir if as a man of god you ever call for a solemn assembly and people come there is something on you it's not about stories and nonsense What is upon you is what controls what is around you. I repeat, what is upon you? If you desire something around you and it's not there, don't look for it. Look for what must come upon you to bring that thing you desire. Oh, it's like you, Lord, in all the earth. Much less love and beauty endless work nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus you're the count that will run dry treasure of my heart and of my soul My witness, you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present wrong. You're the holder of my future days. And all my days on earth, I will away. The moment that I see you face to face For nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the God that will run dry Yes, you are the God that will run dry other things can run dry. But Jesus, you're the car that won't run dry. Jesus, you're the car that won't run dry. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We're gathered here and we will always allow you to build 
to change, to lift. Any spirit within this vicinity that is not of the Christ I stand here right now if there be any force any yoke any agreement upon anyone's life I speak right now be set free be released now every other influence on your life that is not of the Christ bringing you oppression programming failure to your life I stretch my hands and I command liberty right now in the name of Jesus please be seated God bless you mm. this is koinonia The anointing that comes upon you when you come here is the Holy Spirit doing something within you. Because the words that you are hearing are not just carnal words. It's not just a lecture. The words you are hearing is spirit and life. So while the word is coming, something, an anointing, one of the true riches of the kingdom comes with the word too. If you believe what I'm teaching you, you will so dominate life in a way that will surprise you. When you do not possess the riches of the Spirit, then every other thing becomes Lord over your life. But those who dominate in this kingdom are those who possess the true riches of the kingdom. Hallelujah. have a new topic tonight but last week um, I was to give us six points on what the secret place is I gave us five and we had to stop because of the time let me quickly give us the last one please you can um, especially if you were here just go back to your notes and I'll give you the last point very quickly and then we'll go to tonight's discussion We discussed last week that the secret place is a place of brokenness. We discussed that the secret place is a place where we obtain mercy. That the secret place is a place of revelation. Where the mysteries and the strategies of the spirit are revealed to men. Especially the mysteries that's responsible for your destiny. I'm lifting your family, said the Spirit of God. No, this is, not, this is not for everybody. I'm speaking to someone now. I'm lifting your family. It will be like a dream. It will be like a dream. I'm lifting your family. 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 The Lord is bringing... Bringing... A long period of struggle for a family to end that's what the Lord is doing the confusion of many years coming to end within a week completely within a week Lord is speaking to someone here and he's saying I will visit you again of course everyone can receive but this is a particular revelation God is saying I am coming to you again the way I came before I am coming again I am coming again it will be in this month this month of June he will come to you again with a very strange encounter and you will receive something from that encounter that will change your life 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. So we said that number four, that the secret place is a place where we find rest and comfort. Rest and comfort. And then number five, we said the secret place is a place of revival and restoration revival revival of fire revival of love revival of passion revival of grace revival of mantles revival of new dimensions in the spirit and then i'll give you the last one and then we'll go this is not the topic for today i just want to make sure we complete the note that the secret place is the place of spiritual empowerment. We gain power not by strolling on the seat. It is in the secret place that we find true spiritual power. In a secret place you get the anointing for your personal life. And in the secret place you get the anointing to accomplish God's agenda for a season. You can be anointed as a believer, but not anointed to be relevant for a season. Listen very carefully. It is possible that I'm anointed. If you come to me, I can pray for you. But as far as God's agenda within a territory is concerned, it's possible that you are not relevant. There is a special anointing. That one is not the anointing for a believer. That one is not even the anointing for your call and office. It is the anointing that makes a man relevant within a season. That's why you see many anointed people become voiceless after certain seasons. They are still anointed. They still love God. But the anointing to play a key role in God's program is not there. So although they are anointed, you still get blessed. But it's very clear that the lampstand is not on them within that season. The Lord put a very serious topic in my heart tonight that I want to share. Tonight's topic is going to challenge you. It's going to inspire you. And it's going to provoke you. Pray in the spirit for one minute. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Pray in the spirit. Just pray in the spirit for one minute. Just be sensitive to the instructions. Shabala kato selebe kato selebratiash. Shekete barato sodo balato. Shebete kato 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 balato sekete. Manaka la baruse adamala kasom British kalabaria. You're allowing your spirit contact something while you pray. Shata kata la kato sada barato se. Mande kato sabara kato sheleba. Sheketo kato raso do balada 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 bas. Shekete kota sekete le kato. Embre kato sala barato shabre dege de balade balada. Don't stop. Keep praying. Shabala da bala da bakatos. Shekete kete kara tu sada bali katapos. Galel yon, God most high. Jesus Christ is the Elohim of Israel. Hallelujah, God most high. Jesus Christ is the Hallelujah of Israel. Hallelujah, God most high. Jesus Christ. Please be seated if you can.
Alléluia. Please sit down, get something to write if you can. Unless understand what the Lord wants to help us. I'm not sure we'll be able to complete it tonight. Contending for kingdom relevance, part one. Mm. Contending for kingdom relevance, part one. Contending for kingdom relevance, part one. This is a very powerful teaching that seeks to show you how you can become a voice. You can represent the voice of God to a generation and you can rise to a position of kingdom influence. Remember, we're still in a season where God has declared that he is lifting men. Acts chapter 13 and verse 36. Please give it to us. Just sit where you are. Something is lifting from your life. Lifting from your life. Lifting from your life. I change that situation now. I change that situation now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I change that situation now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I change that situation now. For David, please give us amplified. He says, for David, after he had served God's will and purpose and counsel, but he served it in his own generation. He said, fell asleep and was buried. But he said, David served God in his generation. It's not enough to serve God. Is enough to serve God within the context of a generation. Are we together now? There are mandates that are left for generations. Every generation has a spiritual curriculum about God and his purposes that God intends for them to accomplish. And hear me your relevance within a generation is predicated upon your understanding your generation and knowing the corporate mandate that god has put upon that generation you can live within a generation and serve god but serve god in a way and manner that does not influence a generation it's not enough to serve god you must serve god in a way and a manner that brings the purposes of God to a generation. And this is what I want to teach you tonight. He said, David served God's will and purpose and counsel in his own generation, not another generation. Everyone that the Bible records that was used by God was used within the context of a generation listen very carefully if you miss 
relevance within your generation then you have missed relevance forever are we together i think i was teaching in lagos during the younger yielded program and i gave them an illustration no matter how anointed i am anybody above 55 years is not within the scope of my generation no matter how i love them they will be blessed from my life but they will quickly go to papa oyedeko and papa deboe because those are the voices of that generation are you getting what i'm teaching you now it's not enough to seek relevance you must seek relevance within the context of a generation your voice does not speak to every generation there is a generation where your relevance is allocated to god sends men not just to places he sends men to a generation and if you cannot identify your generation of impact and influence then you will live a very useless life and david after he served the will of god there are some things that are allowed in other generations that are not allowed in others are we together every time god was about to move within the scope of a generation he would find a man or he would find men and then begin to introduce them to the dynamics of relevance and greatness contending for kingdom relevance there are things that we need to know if we are to rise to a point of kingdom influence and relevance and have taught us again and again in this place that kingdom relevance is very important to have kingdom influence and it is also very important to be able to speak the purposes of God. When you are unable to represent the purposes of God within a generation, then you may not be able to to influence that generation judges chapter 6 please very quickly we are going to read from verse 11 judges chapter 6 this was an encounter that the lord had with a young man called gideon verse 11 and there came an angel of the lord and sat under an oak which is in Ophrah, and pertained to joash and all of that and his son Gideon Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites remember they were being threatened by the Midianites and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said the Lord is with thee O mighty man of valor." and Gideon answered and said unto him O my Lord if the Lord be with us, why then is this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our father told of saying, Does the Lord not do this and that and that for him? And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? It didn't look to Gideon like he was sent. But God said, have I not sent thee with a message and a mandate to a people? Next verse 15. And he said unto him, listen, listen carefully. He said, oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save where? Not the whole world. Israel. You have sent me with a message. But that message is to a people and a context. He said, behold, this is my limitation my family is poor in manasseh and i am aside from the fact that the family is poor i am the least in my father's house 
look at the excuse he's giving god is telling him i am lifting you and then he says i cannot do the assignment because of two things one poverty there is a relationship between poverty and lack of influence and lack of relevance number two lack of greatness i am small my family is small and yet even in that family i am the least in my father's house 16 hallelujah hallelujah and the lord said unto him surely i will be with thee and because of my presence with thee thou shalt smite the midianites as one man follow me very carefully tonight <laughs> jesus psalm 24 and verse 6 he said this is the generation not this is the person listen carefully this is the generation that has a mandate as a generation to seek god but to seek god in the similitude of jacob listen very carefully he's saying the word oh jacob there is oh god of jacob he said there is a generation mandated by god to seek god in the similitude of jacob are we together now when god tells you to search for him he looks for human references that are reflections of that expectation are we together when god wants to teach believers to love he will lift up john and tell them to study his life when god wants to teach people how to walk in the blessing he lifts up abraham and tells them to study his life in james chapter 5 when god is teaching people how to pray strategic prayer he lifts up a prophet called elijah and says study him when god wants to teach people on faith he lifts up peter when god wants to teach men on revelation he lifts up paul the apostle are we together now so god is very figurative in his expression for you to understand this scripture you have to go back to genesis 28 and genesis 32 and study how jacob sought god because he said the mandate that was on one man jacob is a mandate that one day will come upon a generation that a generation will be mandated to seek the face of God in the similitude of Jacob. Are we together? God appears to Jacob in chapter 28. And until that time, listen carefully, there was no God of Jacob. When God revealed himself, he said, I am the God of Abraham. There was a way I taught Abraham to seek me. There were possibilities about me that no one had known but my encounter with abraham introduced the world of men to these possibilities the god of abraham then isaac the son used the god of abraham to create the god of isaac the god of abraham was a springboard the mysteries of god that his father knew and out of his own dealings with god god created a name called the god of isaac by the time we get to psalms here jacob had done his own too and god names himself by a man's experience with him jacob's encounter is so powerful that god's covenant people were not named after abraham they were not named after isaac they are not called the abrahamites they are not called the isaacites they are called the israelites not even the jacobites so powerful was this encounter that god said the generation that wants to know me must seek me in the similitude of jacob
you want to influence a generation hmm. god is lifting her dr alima i'm seeing her climb a ladder the spirit of god is lifting her to a higher level of influence that's what that's what i'm seeing in the spirit you want to be relevant to a generation if you love god and you desire that through your life his purposes be established then you must contend for kingdom influence i've taught you again and again in this place that kingdom advance is a product of two things one is global evangelization number two influence the purposes of the kingdom must be established in the hearts of men through evangelism and then through influence must be established across every strata of human activities are we together and so you must know how to birth the purposes of God and I want you to follow me as I share with you there are certain things in the spirit that when you touch you will never be irrelevant please listen to me but most of what it takes to be relevant believers are not seeking it we are seeking nonsense all around yet we are looking for kingdom relevance the things that make for relevance in this kingdom are spiritual in context first in that order we are searching for mundane and carnal things that do not have the fortitude to give men a voice in a generation that's why I shared with you the secret place before coming to this topic. And David served his generation. I hope you know, listen very carefully. I hope you know that when the Holy Ghost came upon the apostles in Acts chapter 2, from then onwards, the strategic apostles that were listed in the Bible were not the only ones who received there were many other people but a few people grew to a point where their voices echoed through history to the point that they were captured in this bible when you study history not just bible history you study history and archaeology you will find out that many other spiritual things happen concurrently as at the time certain historic writings were being written spiritual things but they were not relevant to the context and the program of God within a generation it's amazing how people think because they are born again or they have a church or they have revelation they will continue to be relevant in God's program for all seasons no sir I have seen extremely anointed men and women of God and I have seen the boundaries of their relevance with respect to a generation. I have seen people who are not too anointed, but I've seen them at the epicenter of a generation's relevance. There are men and women who would look at people like Joel Austin and look at people like Joyce Mayer. And um, if you're one who is into the things of the spirit, fasting, prayer, with all honor and respect you may not so much appreciate their ministry because of the context of their communication it sounds very basic yet in a way that looks as though it's a charm they have commanded the attention of a generation effortlessly unbendingly they have entered their sabbath in relevance and yet again and again we find anointed men miracle workers still crouching scrounging at the doorways the corridors of relevance understand what i'm teaching you tonight and you will enter your sabbath there will be no need for competition there will be no need for unhealthy comparison because you will know that the keys of a generation has been given to you <laughs> You have captured my heart, consume my heart with your love. You have captured my heart, consume my heart with your love. 
one more time. generation he peeped into another generation that was not his own and he wanted to still negotiate and God said no 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 you have tried Abba he wanted to start building a temple to start the mandate of another generation and God said you have tried you have tried you have tried David you have served God you have shed blood in the process just relax let your son take over and he said I must still contribute let me gather the materials and God said this man David you you are a man after my own heart. And because of that, you may not serve in that generation, but I will show you. Look at the Messiah. And David saw a vision. The Lord said to my Lord, sit down. That was the coronation of Jesus. He said, David so longed. He, he mastered his generation. There was no other voice speaking. Samuel was a man who held the keys to the voice of God in his generation. You could brag and talk nonsense, but if you did not find Samuel, you would keep crying. It wasn't pride. Oh, God is everywhere. Yes, but there are gatekeepers. Samuel. Samuel. To the point that when a man was about to step into the anointing, God had to use a coincidence to lead him to Samuel. The Bible says of Samuel that none of his words, none of his words fell to the ground. But remember before Samuel started, there was a man called Eli that served the priesthood of his time. There was a period of more than 500 years of darkness from Malachi till the appearance of John. After prophet Malachi, it was somewhat a very dark season for the church. No prophecy, no nothing, everything. And all of a sudden, a young boy born to a man who began to manifest a level of priesthood called John the prophet was in the wilderness and all of a sudden for the first time they would encounter a prophetic voice they had lost touch with prophecy and then john was so wise he knew when his relevance was coming to an end and when jesus show up showed up this is what he said that i may decrease i have exhausted myself jesus listen John remained relevant because he announced Jesus and he kept upholding Jesus. The moment he brought Jesus down, he died too with him. Although his mandate was over, he said, who is the next? Let me uphold him. Let me give you this secret. I want to teach you something powerful. If you are in ministry, never fight your sons. A father that fights his sons loses his honor. A son that fights his father loses his life. There are punishments allocated for the various offenses. Every time you see God lifting a man, join to lift it. If the last move of God always fights the next move of God, chances are that when we are in the program of God and a shift begins to happen, and God begins to raise other voices. The, the threat of feeling irrelevant begins to make people to not want to partner with what God is doing. And they now begin to fight it. And you cannot fight what is of God. You will go down. And so they go down together with it. Do you know why David's name still remained relevant? 
Lord, you will not allow me build the temple. You said I've shed innocent blood. I would have been offended and David's name would have gone down. But he said, no, Solomon, I will gather the materials for you. Build the house. I will gather the material. Everybody who partnered with everything God was doing also remained relevant. That was the wisdom of the woman with the alabaster box. I'm a prostitute. I mean, I don't have a name. But Jesus, can I partner with your relevance? And Jesus said, anywhere they talk about me, this woman too, her story will be remembered. There are people all across this nation and all across the earth who by either because their assignment has come to an end or their lack of spiritual alignment has edged them out of God's program. Once upon a time they were at the epicenter of God's program. But either because of pride or disalignment or just the assignment coming to end. You know why Billy Graham remained relevant? He knew when he had served his generation and he created a legacy institute and all he was doing till he died was lifting all those who it was their generation. And although he's dead, he has been immortalized through his ability to lift men. Same thing with my dear mentor, eternally Dr. Miles Monroe. He died, but his books brought him back to life. He said, body, you can be laid to rest. Mind, stand up and keep speaking. Miles Monroe is still alive. His body is in the grave. But his mind is still in us. We have kept him alive. Because he saw a generation. One of the last books that he wrote before he died was passing it on. The mystery. Not everybody will be relevant for our generation. Once upon a time, Papa E.A. Adeboye grew with a generation. And today he's old with that generation. No matter how prophetic you are, your mother would prefer to listen to Papa E.A. Adeboye than you. I said it in Lagos that even if I cut a human head and throw it down and carry it up and fix it back to show how powerful I am, an old man will look at me and say, wow, young man, I'm impressed. Let me go to redemption camp quickly. I'll see you later. Because even if they come for this program, you were not sent to that generation. The voice that grew with that generation is the voice that represents the purposes of God to them. Listen, demons know this. Occultists know this. Believers do not know how to grow with a generation such that you become a dimension of God. The four faces at the throne represented different dimensions of God. What I am teaching you tonight will keep you relevant because by the time you are establishing this kingdom, your generation will know you to be the face of something about God to them. Every time you talk of prosperity, we go to some Adeyemi for his generation. When you talk about faith and signs and wonders, am I not a man of faith? But you see, our parents will not come to me as that reference. I didn't grow with that generation to represent that dimension of God. I'm teaching you how you cannot be erased in the purposes of God. You want to stay relevant? It's more than making money. You must represent a dimension of God to a generation and grow with them knowing you to represent that. By the time they are established, they will educate themselves to look up to you by grace as a revelation of that dimension. Who is the Samadayami of our generation? Who is the Bishop Oyedeko of our generation? Who is the Papa Iya Deboy of our generation? Who is the WF Kumuyo of our generation? Who is the Apostle Babalola of our generation? It's not just giving yourself titles, I'm Apostle, nonsense, I'm, I'm Prophet, rubbish. That's not the issue. It's about staying. 
it is your generation that will call you not you the bible said they shall call you the reward for being branded to represent a dimension of god is the name they call you are we together some of us your ministries right now have a lot of small children and teenagers and you are embarrassed because you are hoping that rich millionaires of 60 years will start coming to your church you better thank god for sending a generation for you to grow with them are we together i remember years ago when he and i started there were a lot of young people students all around and people would just look at it like a children's on the school class and i said oh dear those people that are children are now workers scattered all around you see that if papa Ia deboe says all believers in nigeria fast for three days whether you're a member of redeem or not you are going to fast if your pastor said don't fast you just respect him and pass and say nonsense <laughs> you just started a church two years ago and you are telling me to disobey a man he has represented the voice of god not just to nigeria but to the world contending for kingdom relevance I will never lead a group of people who are anointed and not relevant I have studied the systems of the kingdom and I have studied the limitation of the ignorance of anointed men of God men and women of God especially in this nation are very ignorant when it comes to the strategies for kingdom advance the scope of our relevance is building individual capacities to love God but the strategy for kingdom advance is seldom understood and our generation is at the mercy of a bridge a repairer of the bridge otherwise we will have very heavy spiritual capacities and lose a voice territorially are we together praise the lord five keys let me not waste your time straight to the point five keys you want to serve your generation please i want you to listen very carefully to become influential enough to establish the purposes of the purposes of god within a generation number one you must know god you must know god you want to serve the purposes of god you must know god not you may know god not you can know god you must have an encounter with god Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 the Bible ties exploits even within a generation to the knowledge of God are we together it says such as do wickedly against the covenant he shall corrupt by flatteries he said but the people that do know they are God they are God let me tell you what that means to know God is not just to know the general God you must know the God revealed to your generation. If you are in Jacob's generation and you know the God of Abraham alone, you will not be relevant in Jacob's generation. Every generation has a dimension of God revealed to it. Whoever finds that dimension is the person who becomes relevant within that context. Are we blessed? But the people that do know their God they shall be strong and shall do exploits listen to me in this kingdom it is your fraternity with the spirit realm that culminates to your dominion and your victory ask any great man if they are honest enough they will tell you there is a certain level in this kingdom and in the world today you cannot rise beyond without a fraternity with the realm of the spirit whether in business in ministry listen carefully career whatever it is if you ever see anyone commanding any dimension of superior results whether through occultism whether in the secular or whatever i can tell you beyond the secular knowledge and all of those things a time came in their lives 
when they became assisted by the realm of the spirit for 30 years jesus as the word the living logos was powerless but when the holy ghost came upon him that partnership turned him into christos the christ the anointed one the messiah you must know god you must know god jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23 to 24 please give it to us quickly jeremiah chapter 9 thus saith the lord not an angel let not the wise man glory in his wisdom our generation has many wise men who are poor many wise men who are broke many wise men who are not relevant at all the bible says first things first he didn't say wisdom is not important let not the wise man glory in his wisdom let not the mighty man glory in his might let not the rich man glory in his riches 24 but let him that glorieth glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me that's the pride of the believer your the foundation of your confidence in life should never be because of the car that is parked outside because of the food that is on your table because of your degree that is in your drawer are we together no. all those things only make sense when you are centrally connected to god those who will be relevant in these end times those who will defy the operation of demons those who will defy the causes and the yokes of culture those who will defy all the manipulations of darkness they are not just well-meaning people but those who know their god understand it and know it me are we blessed you go and prescribe this to someone who wants to be great and see how he will frown at you he won't exactly hate it he will just smile and be angry because he believes that when you want to be great just teaching business principles do this do that quickly you want to be great oh let me teach you on book publishing book publishing is the art of a that gives b this to c all those things are rubbish if you don't know god one yoke from your village can rewind your success is all you are you are you are laboring for nothing the bible says it is vain to wake up in the morning hear me nigerians wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow that's why many hard-working people are angry they look at life and say it's not fair and you are right I was a graduate since 1961 and I've not built a house now. And look at all these small, 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 small boys. Sorry for you. The foundation of relevance for every generation is not just your connection to God, but your knowledge of God. When last did you ever see this being prescribed as a formula for greatness? And please, those of you here who are into personal development and the rest is wonderful. When you are teaching the secular, you go ahead. But when you are mentoring people, let the foundation of growth be the realm of the spirit. Are we together? You know, you talk like this and a lot of people believe that you don't know what you are saying. You don't know anything about secular success. You are wrong. You are wrong. You must know God. Jacob had an encounter with God. A nation has never been named after you. A nation has never been named after your father and my father. Listen carefully. A nation has never been named even after your president. There is, I'm not sure of any nation in the world that has been named after a man. So when a man is so relevant that God's nation is named after him, study how he rose up like that. The foundation was not intelligence. The foundation was an encounter. Genesis chapter 28. When you read from 11 to 17. He lighted upon a place and lay down 
on a stone to sleep and the bible says when you begin to read down to 17 that a ladder was connecting the earth to heaven listen very carefully and then at the top of it give us verse uh, let's see verse 13 or 14 and listen behold the lord stood above it let's hear what god is saying god said i am the god of who god himself is calling himself the god of abraham so it's not something men are calling god himself called himself not i am the king of kings i am the god of abraham i am the god of isaac stop no other person had been interested in knowing me enough to add to the list that means it was never supposed to just stop as the god of israel i am the god of abraham the god of isaac i am the god of jacob uh-huh i am the root of david david added himself i am this and that then joshua selman too comes to add himself so that our children when you say i'm not saying you should say the god of joshua selman i'm just teaching you how it is when you say the god of joshua selman it's not the same as the god of abraham i don't know what abraham saw i don't know what what his business was with god but there is a dimension you hear the people say the god of our fathers had appeared to me at that time jacob had not yet been in the list he says the land where out thou will this and that and that and that and then jacob woke up in the morning and said the lord was in this place and i knew not how terrible he said this is the house of god the gates of heaven the next encounter will be in chapter 32 and verse 22 please give it to us we are reading down to 30 chapter 32 from verse 22 22 32 22 chapter 32 and verse 22 let me read it from here chapter 32 and verse 22 and he rose up that night jacob now and took his two wives and his two women servants and his 11 sons and passed over forth jabbok 23 we're reading to 30 and he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had 24 and jacob was left alone jacob got to a point where everything that represented his relevance he had to give it away wives go possessions go everything go and when he was alone the reason why many of us may never encounter god is because there are many things together with us your money is still there your house is still there every other thing is there but when you are left alone he says and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day 25 and when he saw that he prevailed not against him he touched the strongest part that means you have been strong by yourself without me i see that you so love your degree to a point that every time i say i'm lifting you you smile and say it's because i'm an engineer of course i should be lifted it's because i'm a doctor it's because i'm an architect lord i know that contract and god's touched that area and said it may not always be by what you call strength it is by my strength and the hall of jacob's tie was out of joint and he wrestled with him 26 and he said let me go god now for the day breaking and he said jacob may that be someone's testimonial that you say lord in this generation i don't just want to be a story i will hold on to you and people say look everybody is getting a job oh, everybody is moving and you say just leave me may god bless you but lord i cannot leave this place you see many graduates make a foolish mistake the moment they write their last exam they pour mineral on their head and joke around and play around tap water and immediately they are done they carry their bag and run and join the queue of confusion where you should stay back and have a two weeks retreat and lie down near one tree and say lord i'm not leaving this place until i f what will i tell my generation that i went to school for five years is that enough to give you a voice 
I entered somewhere in Abuja and the receptionist had three MSCs. Receptionist, three MSCs. I said, if you come to this place and it's grammar you want to talk, you will be a foolish person. Three, two of them were abroad and then one in the country. Receptionist. Don't think it's a small place. A salary can, let me just keep quiet. Oh, don't, don't think reception is like you are thinking one small kiosk. No, that's a place where only kings enter. And I said, my God, you need more in this life. Brothers and sisters, I'm not teaching you to be lazy. But I'm telling you that if you want to command a voice, you can carry your first class degree and get a job and meet somebody who was the son of a herbalist who also got the job with you and they say we are considering someone for promotion and he's laughing at you already he's pitying you because he knows one week to the promotion interview your leg refuses to move from your bed and you come to the office and he says well just to let you know that you had me you had that they say my father is a herbalist <laughs> the wicked world that we live in I know someone who was promoted true story sat down on his chair for the first time and died on the chair there they went to consult all kinds of people some habali says his wife that killed him some other habali says the guy that mops the the office that killed him it doesn't matter he's dead he's dead who killed you it's not a, you are dead can you know God to a point that someone is concocting a charm? The first portion he drops, fire responds. Fire. And says, no, no, there are some touch knots. Ah, ah. He suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake. Saying, touch not my anointed. And do my prophets no harm. Listen, something happened, I think it was last week one of our dear ones some of these touts these boys around that catch people collect phones and the rest and i got to hear that one of our dear ones as he went home he was whether he was on his way going home or he went home i think he went home and then went to get something or so afterwards that some of these touts these guys just attacked him they attacked him collected phone this they caught him like this with a knife like a ram they showed it to me when i was in lagos over the over the, the, the week i just came back today and then when i saw it i was just laughing i allowed them the protocol and the rest to shut the door i got down on my knees i said lord except i am not anointed the person who did this thing listen when i said that by evening they had caught them they are right now as you call alex outside the police now right now do you know how they caught them they after that prayer the guy now went to go and waylay somebody he didn't know he was a police officer then they caught him and packed all the phones and the phone they picked was the guy's own they called and his friend was with him in the hospital as it is today they are carrying him to the hospital to identify him and only god knows what they will do for him do you know god that much that the bowing of your knees can manipulate anything in the earth realm see let me tell you if you don't understand this most times you would think people are boasting when someone says i will pray for you you've heard that thing i will pray for you doesn't pray for us so because you know his prayer is powerless but there are people if they say they will pray for you rejoice they are not using your faith he said for this cause i paul bow my knees to the father i'm praying for your sake ah jesus prayed for us so john 17 he prayed for us when i was coming the military people came to greet me i said please you people should use those boys to teach people in this area that there are still apostolic and prophetic voices we are not just acting nonsense here and then all kinds of young boys just go and continue oppressing people what devil what nonsense i'm saying it again let me announce across this territory that any gentleman any lady whether you are here or not that gets up 
to manipulate people, boggle their house, I command the earth to fight them from tonight. That some of them will go to bed and lie down and not wake up. The territory should know that God has voices. It's not by coming on TV and making noise. Elijah said there shall be no rain. We need to sanitize this spiritual environment. But the people, you don't need to know everything about God. You just need to know the dimension of Him revealed to you. I don't boast of knowing everything about God. There are some things about God I totally don't know. But let me tell you, there are dimensions of God that He has shown me by His grace. Your pursuit, if you want to be relevant to a generation, you must know these dimensions of God. Going to church is not enough. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praying and fasting is not knowing God. There are only tools to help you know God. One of the major reasons why people don't know God is they don't give Him time. Be careful with this I'm busy, I'm busy. You need to give God time to know Him. Our generation, we pray, we fast, we sing, we go to church but we are unwilling to give God time to know him if you see people doing three days fast there's fire on the mountain real fire on the mountain Lord where are you then the fire goes down and you leave him that you sit down and say Lord I want to know you what message do I have to my generation You must know God. I'm challenging every one of us here. Please tell yourself the truth and stop allowing people to just clap for you and say, Wow, prayer warrior. Wow, fasting giant. Wow, word, word, revelation, signs, signs and wonders producer. And you move around fooling yourself that you know God. And life tests you and there is nothing about God that you know. He says that I may know him. Pray one minute and say, Lord, reveal yourself. Reveal yourself to me, O oh God. That I may know you. Lord, I'm tired of ordinary Christianity without power. Show me your glory. Show me your grace. Shiba Koroto Suprahati Asalabarati. Hallelujah. There are things you must know about God. There are things I know about men. Um I used to have one, I, I, I cannot, I can't remember who exactly, but there used to be one gentleman years ago, I used to tease him. He looked very powerless as a man, but you don't see any power, you can almost shake him. And I said, if they ever tell me you fought somebody, I won't believe because I know you. I know you enough to know you are not even strong to lift a sizable chair. So if somebody tells you that that guy finished beating one police officer, you just laugh and say, except the anointing came on him there was something David knew about God that made him stand before Goliath 
we stand and face the challenges in life based on the knowledge of God that we have the armies of Israel had the same weapons that David would later hold but they could not confront Goliath there was something Goliath too knew he was not just big Goliath was not the only giant in the land even among the Israelites they were also giants but they stood and Goliath was roaring wicked man and David said don't mind him carry the sling he said I'm going to remove this your head you will fall down I will use your sword cut it and feed the birds Goliath said am I a dog he said you will soon know when he wound that thing it was not just his hand winding it there was an anointing and he hit Goliath once Goliath himself was shocked that he fell there was something Joshua oh bless his name Joshua knew about God and he said go round don't mind all this big mountain for nothing notice that all the challenges are usually very big Jericho Goliath Red Sea so don't be surprised when yours is big why will you expect it to be small how then will God be glorified 25 years barrenness are we together there is something you need to know about God that you will stand before a generation and they'll say ma it's two years and you are not pregnant yet he said just wait and all of a sudden by the third year triplets will come nine years in three years and they'll come and say ah, you just gave birth I didn't give birth I manifested miracles don't call that is not delivery you go and try it if you get triplets show me the science of producing triplets I know something about God where someone threatens you and says in this office they bow to me to rise if you are not willing to bow to me with honorarium of one million and then respect you are not rising you know? and everybody above you will say just this guy is connected to the presidency and he say all right sir may God bless you and you go back in the night and do something that will make that man call you in a hurry and sign your document and you say just just for starters to let you know that there are men and there are men are we together someone plants a charm to kill you and he's sleeping in his room the charm meets him there physically again charm said you sent me and somebody changed my direction and brought me to the same place I remember years ago one of our lady went to meet a herbalist in this place this this one a herbalist for something like that she kept giving him money was concocting a charm for something and then the last one now he now asked for an honorarium of 30,000 I said her or he, he now started calling her number you better come and fulfill your this you have made me start the charm true story you will run mad and she now ran to me came and confessed his pressure a and b and c happened i said warn that herbal is so my concern is not the charm is his life tell him that he should check in the realm of the spirit you don't speak like that if you have not met god because many people have made bold face when I used to counsel people in Area E, some of the protocol people would testify. People would come with a letter. You would think it's mineral they are holding for me until they open it. You will now see that it's a charm. They collected it from one baba and brought it. And I said, bring it. I look at it. I said, nonsense. You ask the charm to come. There is something you need to know. This world is wicked. If all you know is what your eyes have seen, you better start crying because there are arrows that fly by day. You, you don't need to offend anybody. Who are your friends? Nonsense. It's a wicked world. You mean this lady is getting married? Ah, no. We have to do something. Haba. You mean this man is the one, this young man is the one building this house? No. Ah, ah, ah. You mean is this, this young guy PhD? No. It took me 11 years to get PhD. Why will he get PhD in four years? No. You mean this young lady, five children? No way. Our world is wicked. It's not a news. Are we together? Years ago, um, 
one gentleman that I know got married in Kaduna and then we went then to go and just celebrate with them and while they were bringing the gifts true stories I like praying for gifts we noticed I was sitting down and I noticed after everybody had dropped everything the wedding was almost over and then a woman just came with something that looks like a bucket just dropped it I tapped one of my colleagues and said the Lord just showed me something we opened that bucket true story and we, you know this bucket you put sugar or semovita white this white bucket we saw it with a stone in the middle I lifted it I said you see this this is fruitfulness blood that woman will get married now until her husband drives her and say we can't marry two men go let me look for a woman and I told them I said you people should just be praying on the other gift just leave me with this one Can you confront the gates of darkness and go to bed? If they bring a charm for you now and say, sorry, help me and scatter it, please. Will you say, come for Koinonia on Friday? Or come and drop it in miracle service? Or say, no, no, no. Apostle is busy. Bring it. And you hold it. And without saying any prayer, from where you are holding it, someone is jumping from their house and saying, I won't do it again may God make us a powerful generation all this ministry of just falling down and he said two people will fall the realm of the spirit is higher than that oh. you need results shift in people's destiny just falling down and rolling and standing up they that know their God you get up and have a dream and in that dream you see that there's obituary every month in your house you don't sit quietly and then everybody starts dying and you say ah people are dying that's not the time to start disturbing me i say apostle you are sleeping ah prayer department benga promise pastor alpha kenny no you get up and you say he's not only the god of abraham he's not only the god of isaac you are my god And you announce to Satan and say if you if you near the vicinity of my family again it's a decree it's not pride know when to be a lion and know when to be a lamb no warrior is a lamb in the face of battle whoever told you that this world is a playground you must know God greatness is warfare Greatness is not just an equation A plus B equals to greatness No sir I say it jokingly Only God knows the shrines on earth That my name has gone to Maybe your Zaria city Any other place Oh God let him sleep and not wake up While they finish the charm I just stretch Shabasos kabarando kasilia kata. God gives men the power to lay it down and the power to take it up. You must know God. Take the time to know God. You don't know God by a one hour weekly service. No sir. You don't know God by a five minutes Bible study. You don't know God by an occasional fast when there's trouble. You don't know God by a fire brigade closed door retreat. You give God time and say, Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to see your face. I want to know you, Lord. I want to touch you. I want to hear your voice. I want to love you more. There are many of us tonight, God is calling and saying, Stop this religion and be serious with me. 
stop this religion i'm a deacon in my church i'm an elder i'm the chairman of marriage counseling i am the pastor in charge of choir I'm... no settle down i say lord i want to know you reveal yourself i'm tired of lying and pretending i don't have boldness because i don't know you knowing god is not becoming a pastor listen to my message knowing god experientially God uses experiences to reveal men. You can't just know God. Every experience in your life now is an opportunity to know a dimension of God. Don't waste it by crying around like a fool. Say, Lord, there must be something. All of a sudden, all my money has disappeared to the point that I don't have five naira. Instead of just saying it's an attack, Lord, there is something you want to show me. El Shaddai is calling El Shaddai, he wants to show me that he's the all-sufficient God. Don't waste your pain. Don't waste your tears. Use them as an opportunity to know something about God. Apostle have been barren five years. All right, use the opportunity to know something about God so that the next time you are saying he can make a way in the wilderness is not a song, it's your life. Are we together? Apostle, I had a dream. In that dream, I saw five points. When my result came out, I saw 2.5. Cry. There is something about God you need to know. It is because many people don't know God. That's why they don't receive some prayers. Notice that people receive prayers according to their level of insight about God. When you pray and say in the name of Jesus, favor, amen. But when you say in the name of Jesus, someone who has no business coming to you, I call, ah, they just say amen. Careless amen that doesn't have faith in it. Because that dimension of God has not been captured. Let me give us one more and we pray for tonight. We'll continue next week. Contending for generational relevance contending for kingdom relevance those who will reign in this kingdom must be men and women who know God whether you are a businessman whether you are whatever you must know God you know sometimes sometimes I counsel people when I travel and um, while I'm counseling them the Lord begins to show me something like charms that they have in their houses or something that they tie on their waist for protection and preservation and yet they come and sit down as a man of God you know if you are not powerful that thing will fight you in the name of praying for somebody oh God let this guy win chairmanship and that night you sleep and an old man walks you in a dream one word two words be careful and just leaves you and you wake up with headache you don't know where it's coming from and where it is going to you go to the hospital nothing for one week then he comes again so be careful then the headache stops the next time somebody comes for you to pray for him you say no please go to koinonia when dagon was put face to face with the ark of god the ark didn't remove hands to touch him they came back in the morning and met Dagon. If he just fell backwards, that's not honor. It fell face forward. May your life from tonight be a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Listen, my prayer for you, Koinonia, hear me, is that you don't mock yourself by praying three hours and yet you are afraid of every manifestation of the valley of the shadow of death these boys that scam years ago they sent a text to my phone one i think it's a text they sent to people we are watching you now from where we are and something 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 you are, you are it's like they are threatening you maybe they are watching you through a window somewhere and i, I said look at this they can now lie to you and say go and drop hundred thousand near the green tree near your house and you would think they are really watching you whereas it's a general text they send to everybody fear can create images are we together 
you have a dream and in the dream dead people are coming to visit you you don't get up and say i saw my father he died 1983 thank god he's your father but what does the living have to do with the dead do you know when you see dead people in your dream i don't mean departed saints now glorified dead people in your dream that's the spirit of the grave that's not the spirit of death that's the, the grave itself has a spirit it's a magnet is calling you like you are invoking that's what is happening you don't get up and say chai nigeria said no what is nigeria Shabakatos kalabata. oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory you pray in tongues for five minutes distribute fire everywhere and ask that devil to use the face of your father again it's not your father it is appointed once for men to die the man you see that you are calling your father is not your father is a devil carrying the face of your father what what father your father is there enjoying in heaven and the devil is using the face of one person come come to us come we are calling you let's go home come and eat yam see palm oil what nonsense is that that's what happens to a lot of people they just get up and an infirmity has entered their spirit they go to the hospital and check again and again and again until they die the living has nothing to do with it. if i see anybody i know who has died if it is of god departed saints in light i know if it is a demon spirit i know there is a gulf what fellowship has light got to do with please i'm teaching you this thing if we dwell just in knowing god those who will stand and represent the purposes of god you need to look at the spirit of death eyeball to eyeball we're coming from 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 lagos and and i think it was because of the weather and the pilots too my god the plane was as if it was it was just playing around i was sleeping ask them i was sleeping ah if it will crash i will enter if i enter it will not crash ah apostle the other i don't know who that other person is and what he believes he said let the redeemed of the lord say so you know in this world don't trouble anybody and nobody will trouble. what nonsense are you saying like that the bible said declare ye that ye might test be justified jesus prophesied that i would die but i will come back if jesus didn't say it he would not resurrect let him that glory it glory in this please brothers and sisters there are several people here we thank god for the crowds but koinonia god is not just looking for crowds god is looking for quality people that know god not just the uh, man of god pray for me man of god pray for me on everything man of god sing for me man of god worship for me when will you now build capacity to be a blessing it's all right you can start small our little children in this ministry are more spiritual than most of you these little kids you see the fire you stand near them and see the presence that oozes out of them because of the simplicity of their heart they are feeding with the food of adults as children pray they pray fast they fast Some of them come to meet me after service. My daddy is sick. My dad is sick. I tell them, darling, bring your hand. I place my hand and I say, go and lay your hands. And truly they will do it. But adults, they won't do it. They will just say, don't, don't worry, apostle. Just rub your face with, with handkerchief and give it. Because you are afraid of embarrassment. Is God speaking to us today by the grace of God and with all humility there are things that I know about God that has brought rest to my life I show you how to be free from worry know God there are things when you know about God when others are crying you are laughing you are not laughing because you are inhuman you are laughing because of a rest 
that the knowledge of God has given you. It was Bishop Oyedepo who said one time his wife was pregnant and all of a sudden they noticed she was spotting and then, you know, medically speaking, they said she's lost the baby and he just shouted. He said, is it a baby you are delivering or blood? My dinner, please. <laughs> Come on now. That word maintained that child in that stomach until he gave birth. Blessed is she that believes for unto her, not unto them, unto her, some of you can be listening to me and say, ah, man of God, wow, you can preach well. Life will not ask you whether you're a preacher. The way the devil hates me, if I didn't know what I'm telling you now, he would have killed me since. The devil doesn't want me to backslide, he wants me to die. So a thousand falls by your right, ten thousand by, by your side, ten thousand by your right side. Ah, ah. Pastor Alpha, you are still standing. I thought people in Kogi State don't rise after certain places. No, 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 no. I come from Zion. Ah, I thought your your father worshipped a shrine. So ah, I, I thought that the ladies in your place don't stay three years after they get married. I thought the men that come from from this state are irresponsible men say i don't know who they are but there's something about the knowledge of god is giving me confidence can anything good come out of nazareth yes sir yes sir please prophesy one minute to yourself i live to praise your name i have no fear of what tomorrow brings I live, I live, I live I live to praise your name I have no fear of what tomorrow revelation of God to stamp the face of fear fear of marriage will I marry will I give birth will I have male and female what if my husband dies and leaves me what if my wife dies and leaves me will I be prosperous will the church grow the revelation of God is the antidote to fear God is love and when love is perfected in you it casts out fear Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. Alpha and Omega, hey, hey. my trust is in you. I put them on you. continue next week hold hands with someone and begin to blast in tongues let the realm of the spirit hear your voice go ahead and begin to pray don't ask anything just pray but the people that do know their God but the people that do know their God but the people that do know their God, but the people that do know their God. I know you are a merciful God. I know you are a restoration God. I know you are a lifting God. I know you are a gracious God. I know you are a mighty God. The lifter of men, Alpha, Omega.
Alléluia. Listen. If all you know about God is that He's a merciful God, that dimension itself can take you through your lifetime. If all you know about God is that He can restore, you will never cry when things leave you. If all you know about God is that He's the God of the suddenlies, five minutes to shame, He shows up. Lord, I know you. God is a miracle work. God is you are a glorious. God of the suddenlies my brother my sister God can wipe the shame of men he said have you ever heard this proverb that in one day a woman gives birth lift your voice and pray Lord I know you I know you as a miracle worker I know you as a destiny changer change my life my tears take away the shame from my life hallelujah hey. we're going to sing that song one more time but thou oh lord had a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. That's the name that is called. But thou, oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory, my glory and the lifter.
to round up today's meeting. Hallelujah. Listen. Prayer point number one. I'd like you to say, Father, use my life to surprise my generation. Lift your voice and pray. Use my life as an object of praise. Lord, use my life. Anoint me in an unusual way. Bless me financially in an unusual way. Lift me in an unusual way. Surprise the naysayers. Surprise those who have concluded about my life. Number two, Lord, by your mercy, reveal yourself to me. Please pray. Everyone that asks it, receive it. Lord, I've been crying for marriage, for money, for prosperity, for anointing. But reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10 from verse 28. Matthew chapter 10 from verse 28. It says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Uh-huh. 29. And are two sparrows not sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father. Verse 30. It says, but the hairs of your head are numbered. I hope I'm on the right scripture. Find for me that scripture. Let's go to Jeremiah 29, 13 and 14. But find for me the scripture that says, we have left all to follow you, the apostle said. But let's look at this one while we look for that. And ye shall seek me. This is one of the most powerful revelations about this encounter. You shall seek me. And only find me when you search for me with how many? All your heart. Your entire being must pant for me. You will seek for me with your reputation. You will seek for me with your intelligence, your knowledge and everything. That means if you claim to seek God and you do not find him, there is something still alive in you. The Bible says, Isaiah chapter 6, I believe, verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, something must die for you to see. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw. In the year that my pride died, I saw. In the year that my ego died, I saw. In the year that my agenda died, I saw. Please keep that scripture there. We'll go back to Matthew 19, but please let's go back to Isaiah 6. In the year that my ambition died, I saw. There is a price to see the Lord. The price is that that king must die. Whatever is Lord of your life is your own Uzziah. If you do not sustain the ability to let it die, you will not see the Lord. Hallelujah. The motif of a man's heart must be purged must be vetted for you to do business with god in this kingdom 
again I repeat the price for all of God is all of you not your offering not your money the price for all of God is all of you this is one of the fundamental laws that God taught me that if you are able to die to self die to your ambition to die does not mean to not focus on them to die means to demote them until Jesus becomes enthroned are we together now God does not intend to take these things out of your life what I'm teaching you is what you bring them remember in Genesis chapter 28 Jacob made a very big mistake he had an encounter with God and yet he had so many things in his heart he could not benefit from that encounter even though he was at the gates of heaven but then he suffered for many years in the house of Laban by the time we get to chapter 32 here's what the Bible says that Jacob dismissed his wives go Jacob dismissed his cattle go when he was alone that's the price when he was alone it didn't mean he was irresponsible they were still his own but he said go go away when he was alone then a man came and he fought him and he began to wrestle with him and he said bless me and he said you are breaking the law i want to bless you but you are completing yourself the only way to bless you is i must empty you and he touched the whole of his tie so that he becomes incomplete without god the moment you are complete without god you do not need him again he becomes the completer of your destiny he touched his tie your stability now depends on his assistance you never can be stable without him again and he called it a blessing that is how I bless people I bless people by destabilizing them without me I bless people by creating a system around their life where I become the completer of their lives hmm. and then the Bible says he said what is your name Jacob a cheat a supplanter he says thou shall no longer be called Jacob but Israel for as a prince you have power with God and with men and you have prevailed and the Bible says he blessed him and the sun arose and he called that place Peniel the face of God I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved the law of complete surrender ask anyone who is mightily used by God today they will tell you they did not start their journey looking for ministry please listen carefully they didn't start their journey looking for fame or for power it was a blind pursuit for spiritual things God it is either all of you or nothing else that's how they encountered power that's how they encountered grace it was said of Apostle Babalola he was strolling in the wilderness and suddenly fire from heaven responding to his hunger it was not his plan to be some great apostle but there are many people from the beginning of the work you already have p and protocol and you are planning how your fame will go around sorry this is not how god does business with men don't just pray for a man's anointing pray for his hunger pray for his sacrifice pray for the administration of death that happened Power does not just come. God is not a herbalist. You don't just speak and things happen just because you are a Christian. There is a track record. There is blood dripping upon the altar. Listen, you want to lift your voice and things begin to happen? It's more than an impartation. No. The grave, where death ends is also where resurrection starts. If you want to resurrect, you will still have to enter the grave. You can't be resurrected when you are outside the grave. The condition for resurrection is you must be inside the grave. Now, I'm not a medical doctor. And forgive me if I say something that is wrong. I'm asking for forgiveness now in advance. But I hear that there are certain drugs. If you don't have that sickness and you take them, they have a way of, it's like they almost make you have that sickness before they treat it. So if you say, Lord, I want to be alive in you and you are alive, the first assignment of the grace that comes upon you is to kill you. 
by the time you die to yourself kill you does not mean finish your life kill you means dethrone everything until you are left alone this is what men fear because we want something we can find security in i i want to do ministry but let my certificate be there in case it fails i want to love god but let something be there i know that god wants to lift me but uncle be there in case i need you and god says you are not ready for me the law of complete surrender we have a generation whose faith is auxiliary faith it's not pure faith it's not total dependence on God surrender there is nothing in my life today nothing in my life today that I cannot give to God oh if I'm lying may he forgive me but there is nothing in my life Koinonia will close down if God says this is the last service. It will close down never to open again forever. Reputation nonsense. No. Never leave where fame met you. Never leave where lifting met you. If it met you on your knees, remain there. Even when you rise. Don't let men clap you into your doom and destruction. David was dancing before the Lord undignified and his foolish wife Saul's daughter said why are you falling your hand paraphrasing why are, do you not know you are now royalty you are still behaving as if you are a shepherd and he said I'm dancing before the God who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me so that he will not take it from me and give another Listen to me. When you die to yourself, all of these mundane things, I am apostle, you just called me Joshua. Very, very long time. <laughs> Hallelujah. How am I supposed to behave? Fly? I was nowhere when he found me. Oh. I was nowhere when he found me. Oh thank God for your presence but I will remain where you met me I will remain where you had my teachings I will remain where you saw the miracles hold on to the four horns of the earth don't be embarrassed about your death let everybody who comes let them fly from London from US and meet you still at the place of death you may be inside a jeep but still be dead <laughs> You may be inside a five-star hotel, but still be dead. The pressure from your company is about to eat you up because it is still your own. You see, owners take responsibility. Stewards only maintain while owners take responsibility. When you own things in this kingdom, you are responsible for keeping it. Are we blessed? You're a minister of the gospel here. Please listen. If your desire is to be a superstar, to shine, another apostle, <laughs> let me advise you very early. In the name of Jesus and in the name of honesty, return back to the secret place and flog it out this night with destiny. The secret to fame is to forget about it. Focus on his presence focus on his presence don't be ashamed to let men know he took you from nothing it's not weakness it's not it, it, you are not insulting yourself no are we blessed i marvel at the wonder working power of god literally every day i see the mighty things that god is doing in and through the lives of people i am humbled and broken Sometimes I look at myself and I said, oh dear, oh dear, what God can do with people who die. Death is the price for life. Death is the price for life. This is the first, you want to be great in this kingdom. 
you want to last you want to be exalted i am telling you go back and flog it with god enter a covenant with god and say no matter how great you lift me i will lift you while people are lifting me you must be the highest it will never be about me thank god for the uploads thank god for the good speaking thank god for all of the great things god is doing around the world but in the name of jesus as an individual and as a ministry may we never get to a point where we push jesus out and we are just holding church but jesus is not there we are doing ministry but he's not there he remains the epicenter the focal point of all that we do let joshua selman go if jesus remains we are still intact let fame go if jesus remains we are still intact but let everything remain if jesus goes we are in trouble is someone learning now yes i show you why you are not seeing spiritual power why certain levels of grace i know you are fasting for 10 days you are fasting for 50 days but already competitive jealousy is the motivation for the fast you are still alive you will not find power that way you want to just speak may your life change and people's lives change it doesn't happen like that god is not a herbalist he's not a magician there are mysteries in this kingdom this is why men wonder when god continues to lift us and then they wonder is it that you don't like fame you are doing as if you are not enjoying this thing my one desire is that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised my one desire is that you be praised that you be praised listen let me tell you you have not seen prosperity till you die you have not seen lifting till you die when you really die you will lay up gold as dust you will not know what to do with it all this clamor people are looking for believe me see i tell you this i don't mean to insult your pedigree there are very successful and great people here but i submit to you in the name of jesus and in the name of honesty i have tasted of honor i have tasted of lifting i have stood before kings the person talking to you is not an ignorant person i count it but dung for the excellency of his presence. When you die to yourself, God will take somebody's prayer request and give you as a gift. What people are chasing after. Now forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you And now forever be chasing after you I'll be chasing after you One more time I'll forever be chasing after you I'll be chasing after you. You see, I've had the privilege and honor of meeting extremely successful people. Some of them seated here respectfully. And you know the character of exceptional people by the level of humility in their lives. You will almost always confuse them. It is those who don't have anything that make a lot of noise and misbehave. You will see someone who owns estates, owns all kinds of things, and yet a humility almost to a fault. I remember many, many years ago in this city, very interesting story. A dear man I respect so much, he took me somewhere to go and bab. 
That was the first time in my life I was going to be paying that kind of money or it to be paid on my behalf for barbing. I wanted to say, what is it about the barbing? I mean, give me the clipper. I can barb. How many? What is on my head? For that kind of amount. I won't tell you how much. Ah, boy, it's an amount. You must fear God to forget about it. <laughs> for a haircut? very wonderful executive place and i saw a woman who was moving around trying to find out she would see pieces of paper papers and pick it on the ground and do a lot of things i was almost saying what a diligent staff and someone tapped me and said don't say that that's the owner of the place i said uh-huh that's how you know you can see someone who owns a mega restaurant, chains of restaurants all across the continent. Oh, you don't have this. There's no water. Just a moment. And they will run and bring it because they are focused on impact, not a name. You have a choice. Focus on your reputation or focus on genuine results. Genuine kingdom results. Please lay your hand on your head and pray and cry in one minute. Father, take away everything that makes me alive in the flesh. Let there be that spiritual circumcision. In the name of Jesus, you watching online, make sure you are following. Pray. I want to engage this law in my life. Absolute surrender. Prune my motif. Prune my motivation. Prune my motif. Prune my motivation. All I desire is Jesus revealed. All I desire is Jesus glorified. In my promotion, Jesus revealed. Jesus glorified. In my being anointed, Jesus revealed. Jesus glorified. In my being famous, Jesus revealed. Jesus glorified. Shalakatu siyakata. Enter a covenant with God. Lord, as you lift me, you are lifted in my life. As you raise me, you are raised in my life. As you promote me, you are promoted in my life. I have no agenda to make a name for myself. My pursuit is not for self-aggrandizement. It is for your kingdom. Hallelujah. I submit to you in the name of Jesus sincerely. This is my one agenda. At the back of everything that I do, at the back of everything that I seek, is you that I see. Is you that I see. At the center of it all It's you that I see It's you that I see That must become your desire Why are you looking for that job? Why are you seeking to be a billionaire? There's nothing wrong with those things in themselves God is not interested in those things He wants to know what is the motive Even those who practice occultism, these native doctors and these sorcerers who ask them, you want money? I can give you money. But the condition is that there has to be an allegiance. That's what they want. Satan came to Jesus, your Jesus, and said, I will give you everything. Just bow to me. That's what I want. I don't want the money. What does Satan do with money? Listen to me. Dear people of God, there are levels of liftings. There are levels of influence. There are levels of honor we are yet to tap into. The way up is to go down. That's how Jesus taught us. The Bible says, he that ascended, he first descended. Are we blessed? This is a principle I've learned. One of the mysteries that the Lord gave to me. One time the Lord spoke to me and he said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. 
and I vow that for the rest of my life I will let Jesus be revealed in my life he's the mystery behind the results that you see in this ministry he came to Nicodemus by night and says rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things these results you see it is not within the power of a man to do it I know that sometimes we men of God we like to take the glory and to shine and make it look as if it's our intellect is a lie this is the Lord's doing that is why it is marvelous in our sight men cannot go that far in their strength So for your business, forget about the issue of business now. Forget about the issue of fame. Forget about the issue of lifting. Just focus on him and say, Lord, purify my heart sincerely. I confess that somewhere along the lines of my pursuit, I've been motivated by other things. Don't feel guilty. This is why you are in the house of God. I saw that man buy a Jeep and something within me said you are not a failure he was your classmate make sure you get it too i saw my contemporary ministry demonstrating superior dimensions of power and then i went to fast and said lord don't embarrass me all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted if we stop here tonight you go back with this understanding and pray and God will tell you this for some of you this is the one is not the devil limiting your rising is that God knows if you rise without hearing this message you will be a disaster first to yourself because no eye has seen no ear has heard let me tell you if it's money you are looking for the God in heaven can daze you in a way that you will sit down and look at money and not know what to do with it believe me as I'm saying it now, some of you are saying, ah, God, you will not give you, you will not answer that prayer until that circumcision happens. Yes, sir. Hmm. That God can make any demand in your life and your answer is yes, sir. Give me the car. It was yours from the beginning give me the house it was yours from the beginning give me the ministry it was yours give me the reputation i'm only representing your reputation the reason why you can trust the bank with your money is because of ease of withdrawal when you go to withdraw there's no stories god is only able to trust you to the degree to which he can have it back without complaint can he give you greatness and fame and make demand? Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. After 25 years of mockery. Let me tell you this. Honestly, if it is God you want to do business with, no matter how you pray and fast, the litmus test of death must happen to you. Must. It's a non-negotiable condition. If it is greatness in this kingdom you seek, there will be a demand something that is so alive in your life must die one day take isaac offer him as a bond offering i'm not talking money here and abraham rose up early do you know what that meant to abraham's family life what was he going to tell his wife what were the newspapers imagine as a journalist interpret what happened in our contemporary world today a very notable prophet of god sacrifices his son that's the caption one million likes one million shares madman commentaries will come from several places the next one month will be the stories of people 
Yet Abraham said, I'm willing to risk my reputation that far. Romans chapter 4 tells us his contemplations. Even though he was crying, his plan was to kill Isaac and beg God to bring him back to life. You read it, it's in Romans chapter 4. Do you know how oil, oil that we use for the anointing, I hope you know it comes out of olive. And it does not just, you don't just pluck olive and then oil comes out of it. Find out how oil is made. You have to crush the olive. You pass it through a threshing floor or some kind of crushing system. And while you look at that olive being crushed, you don't even pity it because of the pain. You know the end product. And out of that crushing oil, you want the anointing to heal the sick genuinely not fake miracles you want the anointing to prophesy you want superior grace it won't just come by dropping an offering and hands laid on you no sir there are wells in this kingdom that must be dug through hunger through sacrifice and through death oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Very quickly, let's make progress. Mystery number two. Shilama subra haskadiba lakatuziata. I won't dwell so much here because we've dealt with it. The second mystery that controls results in this kingdom is called the law of the mind, the law of mental transformation. The law of mental transformation. Very powerful spiritual law. Your life will always be a reflection of your mindset the recommendation that is applicable to us it says go and borrow vessels you don't need to borrow oil but borrow vessels borrow not a few and the bible says she gathered vessels and then he said you now shut the door and begin to empty it and then when she emptied it what happened the moment the vessels were expanding the oil started expanding and the bible says and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped flowing i want to lift you but your mindset is too small for your prayer request if i really answer that prayer you don't have the capacity you see every time people receive more than what their mindset and their hands can hold they waste it and they abuse it the miracle of multiplying five loaf and two fish taught us a lesson these guys were hungry and when multiplication started happening without management multiplication without management led to wastage and they all left and jesus said oh dear mankind here is the lesson go and gather the crumbs so there were baskets to put that crumbs in and when they gathered it it was 12 basket full of wastage if you pour water in a cup it is only the size of the cup you you see that now the size of the cup water will be filled just to that level and every other thing will be a waste so god wants to lift you but in your mind your mind cannot hold more than certain levels of leadership more than certain levels of expansion you may be a pastor and you are saying lord i need you to bless me with members and he says they are all over there are over 7.2 billion people on earth i can bring as many but do you have the enlightenment and the transformation to manage what you are praying for that's why the bible says god answers what we ask or think your mind is a prayer warrior too when your mouth stops praying your mind continues that prayer so when your mouth is saying lord lift me your mindset says lord forget about that lifting i am not ready for it yet both your mouth and your mind are prayer warriors 
now you see most times in church we don't teach this because it doesn't seem to look very spiritual so we downplay it and we say you just continue to pray and we have people who continue to pray they study scripture and yet they never rise to notable points of influence they are not represented in anything superior I made a vow and a covenant with God that I would never raise a people who are just spiritually accurate, spiritually alive. I believe in influence. And influence happens through transformed mindsets, through renewal of the mind. Are we together now? The Bible says they limited God, Psalm 78, I believe verse 41, that they limited the Holy One in the wilderness. As mighty as God is, men can limit Him. They limited the Holy One. Could it be that your business can expand more than you have seen? Could it be that your ministry can expand? You know, I, I told you at the inaugural service of Koinonia, when the Lord spoke to me about coming to Abuja and all of that, I looked at it and I said, well, Lord, that's all right. And he made me to buy the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the world. Till today, they are on my table. I think something like that. And I looked at Abuja in the map and it became very small. Just six local governments. I said, I'm well able. It became small. Not small to demean it. But I said, there is nothing complicated about doing ministry. I said it sincerely. It would have sounded like arrogance. But my mind was receiving it. Hmm. I believe in the power of a transformed mind. Your mind is the authorized usher that leads your body to your tomorrow. Anywhere your mind has not entered, the gate will not be open for your body to enter. You don't have to fake any living. No, there's no point faking it. Your mind does not need a visa to travel with the spirit. Your mind does not need visa stamped on any passport. It can travel while your body is still where it is and go and verify that that tomorrow is there. It will come back and usher your body to that realm. It's true. The mind of Christ, superior belief systems. Listen, you have to conquer the spirit of smallness not in a competitive way we already spoke about the law of surrender but small things you do a business you are just thinking of your family members very subsistent living you, he says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed god is giving you a vision to have a bank and you are saying no no it's not for us oh dear if your mind defeats you you are defeated completely completely The miracle of a transformed mind is a real miracle. You have to be convinced that God is able. I can do all things. It's a superior thinking. Fathers like Bishop David Oyedipo will call it a far above mentality. I've been exalted. Don't let people bully you. We live in a society where people can intimidate you. They look at your shoe and say, your shoe is cheap, your dress is cheap, and they make you feel stupid for going through the law of process. Find strength. Your mind is ahead of your body already. Someday, when your body now wears what your mind is wearing, you will see the difference. Do not be ashamed of your journey tomorrow. Don't try to fake anything with honor. See, success is not what you pursue. Success is what you attract by who you are becoming more than what you do. You attract success by growth. Sustainable success is attracted by growth, not just by doing things. When you have grown, almost anything can prosper in your hand. Are you blessed? The law of mental transformation. When I learned this, I became a student of transformation till the day I see his face. I have gathered materials. I continue to invest in my mind because I don't want to be limited. There is a generation that is depending on your transformation. You cannot afford to be small. 
all these all these childish things we do around you just find someone's car you go and lie down on it they will arrest you one day that's not how to grow hello please don't feel bad but that's not how to grow faith is not foolishness many things that we do in the name of faith that's not faith why fake something that can be real listen i will always give this analogy can you imagine someone who is trying to steal a piece of meat in a pot and just when he's stealing it they cut him and say it was your own the meal was prepared for you now imagine how stupid you will feel stealing what is your own the bible says all things are yours why fake it is your inheritance is your destiny already this is not mere motivation it's true he that cometh from above is above all the bible says to set your mind and your heart on the things above and not the things of the earth there are things i believe about god there are things i believe about life you carry a failure mentality no matter what kind of prayer is prayed on you you will fail i assure you you will fail and you will feed your mind back and say i knew it and you were right <laughs> listen to me i know that there are many people here who aspire to do great things for the kingdom god is not against your greatness he says i will increase your greatness and comfort you round about god is about making us great but listen to me the key is not running around trying to do things settle down and build your mind apostle i don't have capital all i know is god will give me money leave the issue of money the problem is not money the problem is to search for knowledge listen when you start growing in your mind there are some clothes you are wearing that must run away from you because that mindset will drive them away it's not about pride or humility whether you like it or not your there are names in your contact that will start going away when your mind is growing and others will start coming because the level of your transition does not allow to still have those physical conditions if our father in the lord baba deboye comes to stand here now and tells you ah something happened and my car spoiled some of you who would never give your relatives money for anything immediately right now with one phone call there will be cars lined up as if this is a car stand why because his level of transformation does not allow him to beg at that level again he has not this is a law where is the first phone you bought you can't even remember and you can't remember giving it out your mindset as it was transformed it became incorrect to still hold that kind of phone now i'm not saying holding an expensive phone is necessarily a proof of transformation just as an analogy have you seen someone who sits in a business class you know he's not supposed to be there everything around his life says you are not yet here you are sitting in a business class your shoe is betraying you your you don't know anybody there you don't have relationships that support that level of result it's a physical reality you have not yet arrived in you are holding a rubber ring life will push you back to where your mindset really makes you but when you grow ah, i wish i were not the one teaching this but it is true listen from that one room you can start growing you are learning what is the mentality of great people what does it take to have a great ministry what is the mentality of uncommon leaders not what is their results don't go around admiring people's results and laying on your hands and just claiming claim their mindset you don't need to forget about the result if the mindset is yours the signs that follow that mindset will come listen there are some of you the mindset you have you will never be able to cross one million in your account even if they give you 10 million nine million would disappear mysteriously through carelessness through whatever and reduce you back to that realm because that is the realm your mind can take believe me
every ministry expands to reflect the mindset of the leaders there every business expands to reflect the mindset of the leaders every home expands to reflect the mindset of the parents every nation expands to reflect the mindset of their leaders singapore was turned from a third world nation to a first world nation not because something came from heaven and landed there superior ideas dubai was turned into a heaven yes they've not given their life to christ in as much as we know but they are living on heaven in heaven now as far as paradise is concerned on earth someone can sit down and see a whole sea and yet in it he's seen something else may god give us the miracle of superior belief systems in the name of jesus christ three keys to transit in mentally number one exposure exposure is a powerful blessing exposure is a double-edged sword it can kill and it can make there is a kind of exposure that will sorry to use that word it will rape your mindset you can be exposed wrongly and from that day you will never be patient towards life again but there is a correct exposure what is exposure broadening your horizon opening you up to the possibilities that exist beyond your frame of reference exposure until you watch a miracle if you watch somebody rise from a wheelchair in front of you you will not doubt it again sometimes god lifts us by taking us to places even though we are not really ready for it he keeps you there and you don't know what is happening to you till you leave that place you will be angry with where you are going back to that's a miracle and you make up your mind that in the name of jesus i won't be at this level again jesus was born in nazareth but he refused to allow nazareth live in him at age 12 when his contemporary teenagers were running up and down he was investing in his mind even though he was the son of god as a result in three years he took the world and said i'm done and levitated with honor back to heaven africa we must wake up the problem is not lack of mineral resources the problem is not only leadership leadership is there but more than leadership we are victims of our thinking the many years of servitude has done something to us the color of your skin does not have an effect on your mind your background and where you come from does not have an effect on your mind there are no second class citizens on earth except you make for yourself he that cometh from above the moment you receive jesus you are born into a superior class of living this is a fact Please make up your mind that you will not be small again. Make up your mind that you will not be small. That what my father did not give me, my children will eat it. Where I could not go. You can't transfer the same mediocrity to your children. It's okay that, okay, those who came before you could not go that far. Don't keep giving flimsy excuses while life is passing you. And it does not come by hustling. Hustling is a demonic strategy. Work circumspectly as wives. Hustling is why people don't give God the glory. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. He said the watchmen watched but in vain. It is vain to wake up early in the morning, to sleep late in the night, only to eat the bread of sorrow, but he gives his beloved sleep. We have systems of advantage in this kingdom. We are not left alone. The favor of God is there. The capacity to restore is there. The gift of man, there. The ministry of the Holy Spirit, showing you what to do part time. Shout, I cannot fail. Please say it, I cannot fail. I reject failure. Now, if you confess like that and don't contend for transformation, you will soon be angry with what you are saying because it will remain empty talk for a very long time. There are people who have done it for many years. Oh, I will not fail, yet they keep going down. 
confession is powerful but it's not the only key to the success equation content for transformation more than the clothes you buy invest in your mind buy materials superior materials technology has made it very easy for transformation with data of next to nothing you can settle down and watch videos and materials that that are consistent with scripture that edify you get all my teachings on them on mindsets they are free get them go online search for them they are free let the holy spirit do a walk you have to understand how the mind thinks i'm sorry to say it but secular education school does not teach people how to think no achievement is a science there are exact equations that produce achievement results you must sustain the ability to replenish and here's where it lies so you don't fear your success I submit to you in the name of Jesus Christ that the results that we see and we rejoice with it is ultimately God's doing but he's given keys there is no fear in these results because it will remain so it did not come by magic it did not come by mistake it can be replicated anywhere in the world and it is true you only fear when your result came by luck when it comes by knowledge knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom you can find rest listen like abraham he says from where thou art lift up your eyes i'm speaking to someone by the spirit from where you are not where you want to be from where you are you can make up your mind dr miles munro my eternally revered mentor changed my life radically was one of the first people the lord began to use to change my belief system i love him even in death bless his soul I heard his story how that he grew up in a family of how many people and they would look from their room and they could see the stars that was the level of the poverty and he made up his mind that things would not be this way but empty talk does not lead to results he began to contend for transformation by the truth more than clothes by the truth are we together Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Verse 8. Philippians 4 verse 8. Finally, brethren, finally, koinonia, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, please look up, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise think on these things i never go for a meeting wondering will the power of god move will the sick be healed no 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 i have a mentality i never go alone i never go alone though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death thou art with me divine presence is a secret i know that his power his divine power i never come for a meeting wondering will people be blessed we're talking the power of the holy ghost here and the lord walking with them confirming the words with signs following there will never be a week where there is no testimony here it's impossible god must bear witness Oh, 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 I know who I am. Oh, 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 oh. oh. I'm walking in power, walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I'm walking in power, walking in miracles. I live a life of 
It's not a Pentecostal song. It is truth from scripture. The Bible says a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field. Knowing who you are is not being aggressive and insulting people around. No. That's insecurity. There is a settled confidence. walking in power walking in miracles I expect favor every day every day honestly I really do I expect favor please sit down we have to rush so you must trust God for grace write two scriptures down you can read them when you get home very quickly genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to 7 the key verse is verse 5 genesis chapter 11 11 i meant to say genesis 11. just write it and then you go and study at home but this was the story of nimrod kush building that tower whose top will reach the heavens the Bible says, verse 4, since you've projected it, let's just look at 4 and 5 quickly. The Bible says, Nimrod, he began to market this idea. It started with an idea. Let us build a city whose top may reach the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered on earth. Look what happened in the realm of the spirit. Verse 5, while Nimrod was busy working on their minds, the Bible says, the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men have finished building once their mindset received it god saw a building rising in the spirit and he came to say what is they've not started building on the ground but their mindset was receiving it everything in life is built twice it is first built in your mind then it is built physically whatever is built physically and not built in your mind you will lose it but destroy anything physical if it's built in your mind the law says it must be rebuilt It's why wealthy people may go down, they may have a season of some catastrophic events, financially and otherwise, and you see them smiling. You are even crying for them and yet they are smiling. They who are the victims, because they know that they not only sustain the ability to be fruitful, they have the ability to replenish. You will only fear your results when you do not know the laws that produce it. Watch this. I will always like to use people who cook. Imagine with me for a moment that you were to go and serve guests and while you were preparing the meal, something happened. And then everything just poured completely on the floor. And then they give you two more hours or three more hours. You will not be afraid again because you can still go back to the kitchen. Once the ingredients are there and you are the one who truly cooked, it's trouble if you just bought it somewhere. And the place is closed then you are in trouble but if you were the one who prepared it you can go back with confidence and even use the anger to make a better version of that thing and say what i forgot to add yesterday as i'm coming back now i'm adding it there law number three are you getting blessed the third mystery in this kingdom that has been responsible for the uncommon extraordinary results of the saints is called the law of mastery and competence. The law of mastery, the law of competence. Write it down, please. Proverbs 18 and verse 16. A man's gift maketh room for him. And the Bible leaves an assurance that the gift like an usher 
can bring him before great men a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men listen to me it is powerful to be valuable you know what it means to be valuable to be valuable means that you sustain the ability to provide solutions that are needed and useful as far as the context of a civilization is concerned listen carefully not just the ability to provide solutions the solutions must be needed and they must be useful with respect to that civilization you are considered valuable to the degree to which your life and your skills provide solutions as a man of god i'm providing a solution the solution may be spiritual in context but it is still a solution number one i'm connecting you to faith number two i'm using the agency of the word of god as a reference to transform your thinking your thinking now being transformed will change your life i'm standing in partnership with the holy spirit to provide supernatural solutions healings miracles signs and wonders that is value many believers are just waiting for some magic to happen as far as their relevance is concerned let me tell you this men will only come to your light not to you if you are not carrying anything of value nobody will look for you gentiles don't come to you they come to your light let me tell you why you are alone you are alone because there is nothing notable coming out of you that is commanding the attention of men value is powerful You must have something to offer listen the table of greatness was so designed that you don't just go there and shift a chair and sit down the condition to join the great to sit on that table is that you first provide your value then that value is vetted there is a threshold level of competence you must attain in order to be granted a seat with the great being valuable as powerful as it is is not enough the highest position in every organization is for masters competence is a promoter it can lift you beyond your background it can lift you beyond your limitations it's a kind of music called music of the masters many of you have listened to it those guys have mastered the art of not failing when they sit down and they are playing they have come to a point where they are one with what they are doing they are not hoping they are right oh you must trust god to be a master at something nobody will come and indefinitely be loyal to you for nothing no when you study leadership there is a dimension of leadership that comes by results people want to see results they love you but they love themselves too they want to see genuine, replicable, consistent results. If you're a man of God, you must make up your mind that I will be competent. I will be competent in ministry, word delivery, excellent, prayer life, excellent, ethics of ministry, administration and managerial intelligence, excellent. Refuse to be small. Value is powerful. When I learned this, I began to rejoice. I found my way out of mediocrity. I found my way out of jealousy. I found my way out of competition. Mastery lifts you to such a pedestal in life. You are so distinguished, it will look like life is flattering you, but it's true. Let me tell you this. I learned this, and for the purpose of this, discussion tonight I want you to write it down that the kingdom of God operates based on a reward system the kingdom of God operates based on a reward system and there is an auxiliary law that is tied to the law of competence the law of value the law of mastery I want to quote it for you so that you have it down and I pray that it will contribute to your lifting and your rising are you ready that the rewards that we have in life the rewards that we have in life 
is directly proportional to three things the rewards that we have in life is directly proportional to three things number one the need or the demand for what you do your rewards our rewards in life is directly proportional to number one the need or the demand for what we do number two our ability or proficiency to do what we do this is where skill and excellence comes in your ability to do what you do and then number three the difficulty in replacing you i come again our rewards in life financial honor whatever kind of reward whether financial or psychic whatever kind of reward will always be in exact ratio in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do number two your ability to do what you do number three the difficulty in replacing you when there are easy replacements for you you will never go far in life this is not from a competitive standpoint but you must make up your mind to be exceptional it is true that no man is indispensable but make it difficult to find an alternative to you and the company will retain you begging i assure you as much as they are downsizing people in this nation there are people who will not spend one month without a job they are too competent for that kind of condition they literally are the brains behind many corporations many years ago i used to know a gentleman he was working three jobs and he was only working three or four times a week he used to live in kaduna state but he worked in lagos and the company would fly him every week he was an it consultant if he coughs i think they'll buy him a, a pharmacy not a drug listen you must be so valuable and you must be so competent there is a measure of honor that only comes to masters i made up my mind and you've heard me say it i don't have an ambition to learn and know everything and to be exceptional in everything but in the areas where god has called me i made a covenant with myself and my life that i will stretch myself to a point of uncanny mastery in ministry in leadership every grace that is available for signs and wonders i will contend for it by light thank god for that which is given me but i will not rest and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you listen you are a music you are a, you are a worshiper you are a music artist don't just sing and be looking for those who know you to keep recycling you around a day will come they will be tired of you because there will be too many alternatives you must trust god for illumination you must trust god for mastery learn at the feet of masters rise to a point where your songs don't die you are a businessman don't say I'm doing business. They are not patronizing me. Oh, I'm a chef. Who can place a demand for you? Until you serve kings, you cannot receive the reward of kings. If Koinonia only provides value to people who are outside of politics and governance and business, respectfully speaking and with every sense of responsibility then you will never be able to mentor kings and bless people the truths that are being dished out from here must be such that all and sundry can be benefactors of it truths that are consistent with scripture proven by the life of exceptional people exceptionally com communicated backed up by the power of the holy ghost like fire into your spirit you carry that truth and you can run with it competence make up your mind to be competent in the name of jesus you're a man of god make up your mind to be competent one headache per year you are not you'll be ready for empty pews not in the times that we live in 
you want to come and sing and you say don't worry don't worry about the wordings or is it is it the melody just focus on the wordings then recite a poem recite a poem are we together yes i know that we all start gradually but make up your mind can i tell you this don't come and stand in front of the stage when you are not prepared you can relax with honor don't embarrass yourself relax with honor and train and train and make that mistake the stage is not for training it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found in you apostle i'm tired of this level then rise through competence i'm tired of this level rise to serve kings i'm tired of this level as a man of god the key is not to ask people to come to listen to you the mere fact listen a mango tree does not call you it just produces fruits big and juicy a few months you pass the same tree as if you didn't see it now look at the skill you have to employ because of the, the the gift on it you use stones you use a rod you even climb it the tree never said you should be that desperate for it it only produced fruits i tell you why people are ignoring you there is nothing of there is nothing notable in your life you don't come to a tree that is not producing anything ask jesus your jesus jesus came to a tree that had green leaves and no fruits he didn't just advise it and say next year make sure that he cost it that's what men will do when you attract men to your presence and you have nothing to offer before you ask men come make sure the table is ready let all things be ready before you call men for a feast don't call for a miracle service when you've not contended for the grace for healing when they are not healed they will say i'm not healed don't call people to teach and then you are sharing things and sharing things and they go back and use the truth you're communicating and there's no results in their lives there is nobody who lives what works at the instance of results results are magnetic they can keep men there keep them in your company not by telling lies the greatest way to market is to tell the truth you have no fear when it is truth nothing to hide nothing to stage manage it is true if i tell you god will lift you believe me he will lift you if i tell you god is is shifting you it will happen because if he did not say it i don't have any business repeating you are only afraid if you speak on your own please make up your mind that you're going to be competent believe us let us not bring reproach to the name of jesus let us go back and do our homework in music in business in politics in leadership buy the truth and sell it not hallelujah every time i finish a meeting like this when i go back home sincerely speaking maybe just rest refresh a bit i'm getting straight to my work as i'm preaching here right now i have my own assignments and i have things i'm doing I return from a meeting straight to this place and when i'm done not even my tiredness is an excuse there is a generation that is depending on my competence there are people on wheelchairs right now who are depending on my contending for that power it is more than what you want don't prophesy nonsense everything you say is not correct don't say it's just god testing me go back and do your homework your name is john no i'm israel you have two children no i have ten you are coming from Abuja, I'm coming from outside this country. Abba, that margin of error is too human. You can't blame God for it. I made up my mind that I will never stand before anybody in this life and be intimidated to a point of shame. I will be challenged. I will be provoked unto godliness but never that i stand before anyone i found out the difference between you and anyone 
is number one your level of enlightenment number two the relationships that come at that enlightened level number three the grace that is at work on your life that's what separates people anybody you ever admire this is what separates him from you can kings stand to applaud you can the great look at you and say i am impressed he behaves like us or can they show you the door and say go out there and never come back again joseph was prepared he knew he was ready to stand before pharaoh i'm sure when joseph was leaving the prison he looked at those who were there and said gentlemen i'm coming for you but no longer as a prisoner i know that when i meet the king it's impossible for the king to have this kind of competence before him and send me back to the prison and here's how he did it he said let the king search for a man it's a diplomatic way of saying i dare you search the entire egypt if you will find a man you've been here sweating for hours and they brought me out of prison don't trivialize my value search for the entire egypt if you will find a man who will interpret your dream listen at the instance of competence without consulting with kingmakers and elders he became the prime minister so there are times that competence can compress time and in a moment enthrone you someone can look at you and without an interview just a five minutes conversation he says come and be the nigerian representative of my company come and be the african representative of my company and you are like it's a joke sorry sir are you joking and he says does it sound like i'm joking you have what i'm looking for do you have what the world is looking for do you have what the world is looking for there are consultants and specialists today that are being flown from us being flown from uk from india to come and perform surgical procedures on certain people why because they are masters there are authorities global authorities in certain fields before you go so far you have they have to vet what you are writing is that true no matter where you are if you want to be initiated to this realm of greatness you must pass through their tutelage they look at what you're saying and say no adjust this adjust that May you be a master. The level of mastery that drives shame from your life. That you have a restaurant that will make people come and sit down there as though they were bound with a spell. What is it about your food? I found a secret. Africa, we love superstition. God is a miracle worker, but he's not a magician. It will take competence to attract honor. It will take competence to attract the goodwill of people. Nobody will clap for you indefinitely for doing nothing. Your assignment, go back to the drawing board. Your assignment, create a drawing board if you do not have one. Don't clap for yourself for too long. You've heard me say it here, that no one claps for you for the same thing twice. When they clap for you once, that's enough for that realm. If you don't do anything higher, nobody will applaud you for it again. Are we blessed? I made up my mind to bring glory to Jesus through my life. Not just through my prayers, not just through my fasting, but through competence. That anywhere he would have me serve his purposes, any church I have the opportunity to minister in or here in Koinonia that by the grace of God I will never waste your two three four hours it will never be that you come for any Koinonia meeting and at the end of it you are frowning and say I just wasted my time I would have done something else it will be evil of me to come and waste your precious time many of you are veterans in business you are captains over many why will you come and sit down here for hours and then learn nothing and just jump around and laugh and share the grace that's not the God we serve. By the grace of God, you will never sit here and go back with regret. No. That whilst you sit down here, quality life applicable information will come to you that is applicable both in your spiritual life and your secular environment. 
and then the engracing from the spirit this is what makes it more than a lecture a lecture stops in the realm of your mind but there is an anointing an unction that backs every truth maybe i should say this as we prepare to round up many years ago the lord showed me a very very interesting revelation i was caught up in the realm of the spirit listen carefully and then i saw a very big door very giant gate and then in it it was made up of smaller doors and on every door a scripture was written i noticed it was that smaller doors were opening and closing opening and closing and every time they open light would just come from them and i wondered what i was seeing and i was saying lord what is this and then the lord told me every time you catch a revelation in scripture the grace dimension to defend that truth is that light that is released so any truth you cannot validate with your life is not yet a revelation to you no matter how long you have talked about it there is always grace given to the saints to defend the truths that we communicate and the lord walking with them confirming the word the word with signs following the law of absolute surrender the law of mental transformation the law of competence and mastery can you lend me 10 more minutes let's talk about the fourth law and then we pray very quickly the law of faith the fourth spiritual law that is responsible for the excelling of the saints in this kingdom is the law of faith mark 11 please from verse 22 to 24 just summarize it quickly and then we'll pray my spirit is fired up and jesus answering saith unto them have faith in god original translation says have the faith of god he says verily verily i say unto you whosoever shall say to this mountain be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith 24 therefore koinonia i say unto you what things soever ye desire hallelujah when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them hebrews 11 says now faith is the substance of things that i hope for he calls it the evidence of things not seen the evidence of things not seen the evidence of things not seen please permit me to just use money for an example watch this the evidence of things not seen this is a hundred dollar bill please come watch this he wants to buy say maybe he wants to buy this are we together now and it is a hundred dollars if i give him this i didn't give him the book but i gave him the substance of what he's hoping for this is the evidence that he can go to the shop and purchase it are we together now this is what he wants to buy it is not the money he wants but the moment i gave him hundred dollar he started smiling it's as good as having it because he can go to the person go to them that sell and buy that's what the parable of the virgins once you have the ability to buy them that sell will not hinder you so this is it and he comes to the person who sells and drops this and picks this so this was not supposed to remain just as money are we together now eventually i should see you holding this if you hold this forever something is wrong you it is either fake money or you don't know where to meet them that sell the moment you hold this you shouldn't just start jumping yes rejoice that you have it but don't stop there go to them that sell and exchange it for the real substance so the bible says faith is the substance of what you hope for the evidence that although it is not here i have the purchasing power to get it listen the house is not yet there 
but I have the substance this is the evidence that it is going to be mine the lifting has not yet appeared but this is the evidence now in this kingdom the currency is the word of God this is it instead of giving you this mundane piece of paper that when you tear it you cannot go to CBN and say I was holding real money it's gone this is it this is the instrument we use to purchase possibilities in this kingdom every time you find truth it's like money being given to you there is an exchange system in the realm of the spirit you carry that truth this mysteries I'm teaching you now is like dashing you money because you are soon going to carry this truth you are learning there are them that sell don't worry you will go to work tomorrow you will go around and you will start seeing them that sell all around your destiny helpers are them that sell the moment you meet them you will exchange these mysteries for lifting for favor everything in this kingdom is bought but you must know the currencies that we used to buy with in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the same was with god in the beginning john 1 says it says and without him it says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made listen to me very quickly i asked for 10 minutes faith is based on two qualities of god there are two major qualities of god that produce bible faith number one his integrity numbers 23 and verse 19 very quickly please numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 believers read with me ready one to read god is not a man uh-huh neither the son of man that he should repent had he said and shall he not do it or had he spoken and shall he not make it good please look up the bible says god is not a man there is a weakness in all men we lie you don't lie because you are bad you lie because you are human so he says god is not a man that he should lie he became a man but he is not a man if god is a man he must worship who created him he is not a man he became a man are we together the bible says when god says a thing you can trust him he will make it good everybody say integrity the word integrity comes from the word integer sameness as within so without sameness when you say God is a God of integrity that means there is consistency dependability when he says I will lift you he will not turn tomorrow and say no I will change my mind provided the conditions that make for the delivery of that promise is met and kept he is true to his word so the first quality of God that Bible faith depends on is his integrity you want to deal with someone you know will not play games with you God does not do April Fool no when he tells you I will lift you he really means it Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 it shall come to pass the Bible declares if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all his commandments which I command you this day he says that the Lord will set thee on high above the nations of the earth and then he says that all these blessings shall come on thee and shall overtake you there is a condition I'm the God of integrity I am able to do that God is dependable he's a God of integrity the first quality of God that Bible faith depends on is his integrity you must have a revelation of God's integrity when he sends you and tells you I will be there with you trust him trust him even when you do not see him trust him 
are we together integrity he does not change when God speaks to me I believe him when he sent me to this city he assured me of his divine presence and I believed him I came because I believed him nobody signed any form and said I'm coming no faith he said it I believe where will the money come from for the bills it will come through the voice that spoke where will the people to listen come from the word will bring them I know that God is a God of integrity you can trust him you can trust him I know that men have failed you they promised to do a they did B they promised to do X they did Y but God is not like that when he says a thing he has the power to do it imagine the things he told you this year that this is your year of victory you must believe it is true imagine the thing he told you this year that when men say there is a casting down for you it will be that there is a lifting up you have to believe him he told you this year would not end with you crying like other years why are you now doubting his integrity God is not scratching his head wondering how to defend his name in your life he's the Almighty God he's able to do it number two the second quality of God that our faith depends on is his ability there are people that have integrity but they do not have ability I can help you but sincerely I don't have the money he has integrity and the person he's standing with will say it's true he's like that honestly if he has money he will give you so his integrity is not in doubt but there is no ability Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 now unto him who has ability he does not just have integrity listen carefully he has ability to do there are people who want to give you jobs they have integrity but they do not have ability there are people who want to lift you they will tell you just pray for me if i really become the director i will not let you suffer they have integrity but when it has to do with performance you need more than integrity you need ability god is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think and he does that according to the power that works in us everybody say god is able god one more time prophesy say god is, able. god is able don't be in doubt whether he can lift you apostle god said he will honor me where will the resources come from ask the raven where it got bread and came and fed elijah in the night this is god he can make anything out of anything so he has integrity and he has ability based on the awareness of his integrity and his ability you can now believe him what does it mean to believe him to count him as true then what do you do the next thing you do listen carefully listen carefully this is where many people miss it out believing is not faith believing is only part of the faith equation if all you do is believe you are not walking in faith Just because you have rice does not mean you have fried rice. Rice is a major ingredient, but not the only ingredient. Just because you have salt does not mean you have a well-prepared meal. Believing is only one of the equations to faith. Listen to me. The foundation of Bible faith hinging on God's integrity and his ability is the awareness of the promises and the instructions that your blessings are connected to the awareness of the promises the awareness of the instructions that your promises or your blessings are connected to here's how it works every commitment of God in the scripture there is a condition every blessing in scripture 
there is a condition a participatory condition that must be met your condition is not necessarily adding to what christ has done but it's a participatory condition if 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 you want to prosper find out the biblical conditions that make for prosperity subscribe to it with all your heart having this at the back of your mind that at the back end of your obedience is a god of integrity and the god of ability you only have the readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is complete now there's a lot of blind believing god in the body of christ and believing god for this and believing god for this you will keep jumping like that forever respectfully speaking no there are conditions the bible is full of prophecies the bible is full of principles the bible is full of promises when you walk through your garden of eden that's this bible you search for the things god said he would do and search for the conditions connected to them you want to prosper there are conditions attached you are only manifesting faith when number one you believe that god has integrity and ability then you find out the economic system of the kingdom the principles that make for the blessing of the saints then you obtain grace from god to walk in keeping with those conditions only when you act out in obedience is god committed to you are we together it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. I read that scripture already. The Bible says, There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. The Bible says, A diligent hand shall be made fat. We just read it here that a valuable person will attract the attention of kings, the gift of a man. So don't sit down and say, God, prosper me. He's saying you walk in keeping with the principles that release that dimension of the blessing. When you walk in keeping with the principles connected to any blessing, there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to stop you from entering that inheritance. This is called the law of faith. Are we together? We are going to pray. John 11 and 40. John 11 and 40. We have to close quickly and pray. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto you, that if thou shalt believe, you will see the glory of God. This is what confuses a lot of people. Just because Jesus said believe, you have to examine the word that was translated believe there. He did not just mean if you are aware that I'm able to do it. No, no. If you are convicted and then you act in keeping with the truths and the instructions that I give you, there is an assurance that you will see the glory of the Lord. Let me wrap up tonight then by defining faith. This is my definition of faith. That faith is the name given to the action that you take. Faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his word. Faith is the name given to the action, not the conviction. The action you take based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of this person. Faith is the action you take as an obedient response to divine instructions and divine principles. Write that down. Faith is the action that you take based, you take to, what did I say now? It was from my mind. In response the action you take in response to divine instructions and divine principles is called faith. One more time, the action you take in response to divine principles and divine instructions. If it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. The action is called faith. I will lift you. I believe. What are the conditions? Be diligent. When you are diligent, 
that diligence is called faith are we blessed i've shared with you tonight four kingdom mysteries please do not forget them i want you to listen to this teaching again and again you'll find it free on youtube go to our page koinonia global our, our youtube page you can listen again and again go through all our social media pages it's been broken down for you to listen again and learn faith comes by hearing and hearing and the hearing that produces understanding open up your heart by the grace of god next week we are going to finish up the remaining mysteries and you will hold them like keys and you can tell the gate of destiny i am ready open up open up open up i will last because i've surrendered everything i will not become mediocre because my belief systems are superior i will not be left out in life because i am competent and i am valuable and then I will not be a victim i'm not just a sociological being a homo sapien i relate with the divine through the law of faith these are irrefutable keys to an excelling lifestyle please rise up on your feet we're wrapping up i'm on my way to better day I'm on my way to better days Status is changing There's no more decline I'm on my way to better days Prophesy Status is changing There's no more decline I'm on my way to better days I'm on my way, on my way, I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way, on my way, on my way to better days. You're on your way, on your way. You're on your way to better days. Now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. Please turn it into a prayer. Lord, the grace to apply my life to these mysteries I obtain from heaven. Please lift your voice and pray. The grace. The grace. The grace. Grace, we're wrapping up. Lift your voice and obtain grace from heaven. The grace to lay down, the grace to sustain a superior belief system, the grace for mastery and competence, the grace to be valuable. The grace to live by faith, he says the just shall live by faith. I'll never be the same, never be the same. In the name of Jesus, revealing Jesus, bringing glory to his name, exploits by the Spirit, exploits through knowledge, exploits through understanding. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. Listen, the Bible says the word is the seed, the parable of the sower. As soon as the word was sown, the Bible says Satan cometh immediately. Those that fall on good ground, he said, are those who understand, not just those who hear. I assure you, one day you will lock yourself at home and you will stand before your mirror with tears coming down your face and say thank you this is a system of insurance this is a bailout system the cure to mediocrity 
the cure to a life of competition and jealousy you found your way i'd like you to obtain grace one more time and say lord grace to do grace to do i will do this i will do this i will practice it by the spirit i will practice it by the spirit it will cause my life to excel i will practice it by the spirit Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please lend me two minutes and as a body of believers here and following online, I'd like us to lift up Nigeria in a prayer in one minute. We are responsible believers and the church has a role to play in the stability of any nation. We are responsible leaders. We can lend our voice to the heavens. We must cry to God and say, Lord, help us. We humble ourselves and we ask for help. We have stretched our intellect. We've stretched what we know to do. We need divine strategies. Lift your voice and pray. Pray for the government. Pray for members of parliament. Declare peace upon our nation. Lend your voice in prayer. Lend your voice to prophesy. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It says they shall prosper that love you. Lord, grant peace. Peace to our children. Peace in Abuja. Peace in the north. Peace in the south. Peace in the east. Peace in the west. In the name of Jesus, let the voice of violence be far from our habitation. We pray for wisdom. Direct our leaders in the name of Jesus. Grant us selflessness to lead this nation with wisdom. Grant the grace to look beyond our personal benefits and lead a nation where peace and justice will reign. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Very quickly, you are here and you are saying, Apostle, I want to hand over my entire life to Jesus. I came to church because I was invited. I came because there is a hunger and a longing in my heart for Jesus. Whether you are here in the main auditorium or all of the overflows down to the basement, outside, anywhere. I know our time is gone, but we cannot compromise on the mandate for the global harvest. Just two minutes for you, wherever you are, I'd like you to boldly leave your seat and come stand here. It's my joy and my honor to lead, to lead you to Jesus. You are saying, Apostle, I gave my life to Jesus Christ, but for some reason, things have gone haywire in my life. Don't be ashamed. Don't wait for someone to come. Be the first to come. Take that bold step. Let's celebrate them as they come. Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? All those in the overflows, just walk to your screen. Just walk to your screen. You may not have the time to come to the main auditorium. All those in the overflows, down to the basement, outside, following online. I'd like you to connect as I lead God's people in prayer. If you're still joining them, come quickly. Be bold. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for making this very bold decision. I'd like you to lift your right hand. All of you here, lift it to Jesus. All in the overflow, do same. Lift your hands to Jesus. Those following online in your room, your office, your car, just watching from your device, you can lift your hands right there. Jesus is there. I want you to pray this prayer loud say after me lord jesus you're joining them join them very quickly say lord jesus i love you with all my heart i believe that you are the son of god tonight 
I have heard your word. I surrender everything to you. I receive forgiveness of sin. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare from tonight until forever, I belong to Jesus. I am a child of God in Jesus name. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you. Thank you for this once. The Bible declares that whosoever will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. They have come with hearts open. They have come with hearts repentant. I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for that which you have done. I commend them to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That they be established, that they be grounded in righteousness. I pray that they will go forward ever and backward never and according to the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven i declare that god gives you a new beginning in jesus name i pray congratulations um i want all of you to follow there's a gentleman waving a placard just waving to you please all of you follow them same with the overflows just follow them they will have a word with you and you'll be back to your seat koinonia celebrate them <laughs> hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So let me advise very quickly. Please, after service, as much as possible, do well to just exchange pleasantries as fast as you can, and then do well to reach for your homes. Um, we close early today because we have to work with uh, the injunction, the curfew. As you know, that we have curfew by 12 midnight, and we do not want to keep both our precious members and the workers here late more than necessary and so i hope that you bear with us when and if the protocol department if they seem to cut away some of the people who may want to wait behind to see me i apologize i know that so many people may want to see me but please we may make it another time praise the name of the lord aside from a few of our guests and a few special cases as much as possible just go home rejoicing with what you have heard and the lord will bless you in the name of jesus christ are we good on that let's share the grace in fellowship the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forever amen god bless you and see you on sunday dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.